Okay, so some of you might remember in mid 2000s, especially before the announcements of first iPhone, the flip phones were huge. And on top of this trend, there was a Motorola Razr. You could see this phone in every movie or every TV show of this period. Every celebrity used to have one. It was simply iconic. And in this video, I want to explore 2023 version of this legendary phone. While Samsung Z Flip became something of the icon of the flip phones nowadays, I think it's also worth exploring what others have to offer, especially the one like Motorola with such a huge heritage. Back in 2020, Razer made a comeback in the form of foldable flip phone. The new Razer had many signature looks of original phone such as huge chin at the bottom, this time it housed a fingerprint reader, but also this massive camera cutout which is also very recognizable. By today's standard, this phone feels outdated. The reason why I'm showing you this phone is just to demonstrate how quickly technology progressed within three years. It wasn't great, but it was leap forward and Motorola made a huge progress only within three years. We now have much more polished, mature and perfected design and it feels and looks fantastic in my opinion. The hinge feels smoother, it feels sturdier and overall build quality is great. They're also unique enough to stand out and not to be confused with Samsung Z Flip, bringing their own take on foldables and pushing the industry forward, which is always a good thing. So let's just fast forward to 2023 and talk about new phones. So we have Motorola Razr 40 or 2023 as it is also known and its more expensive sibling Motorola Razr Ultra or Plus 2023 as it is also known. Now, yes, there might be some confusion about the naming across the globe, but let's just ignore that for now and let's focus on actual phones. Right, let's talk about design first. I've never been a huge fan of foldable phones. However, after using these for a while now, I quickly fell in love with this form factor. When closed, there are just these tiny squares with small displays that you can just slip in your pocket, much nicer than the huge slabs of glass which we are just used to nowadays. I really do prefer this form factor and I wish more manufacturers will start pushing the boundaries of what's possible and start exploring new form factors. This experience feels very refreshing and new, at least to me, I have not used foldable phones before. Both phones have 6.9 inch LTPO POLED panels. Both of them also feature fingerprint reader with a power button and they both have dual camera setups. They both have AMOLED external screens. The regular Razer has a 1.5 inch screen with resolution of 194 by 368 pixels. And Ultra or Razer Plus features 3.6 inch panel with a resolution of 1056 by 1066 pixels and refresh rate of up to 144 Hertz, which makes it a very, very powerful and capable external display. Additionally, they're both very thin when opened and when closed. Again, portability is a keyword here, at least for me, that's, that's one of the biggest selling points of foldable phones, making a large screen much smaller and much more portable. Many apps are actually designed to utilize this flip form factor my favorite one is this sort of retro camcorder, which you can just use your camera, your phone just like this and the subject can see themselves while well, you can also see what you are taking video of, which is pretty cool in my opinion and, and just refreshing. Now let's get the specs out of the way before diving into actual user experience. So here we have specs side by side. We can see that Motorola is promising three years of OS upgrades on both and four years of support. What's also interesting is that Razer 40 is running Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 1, while Razer 40 Ultra is running Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. In terms of storage and memory, they both have 8 gigs of RAM 
and 256 gigs of storage. Of course, they both have 5G connectivity. That's kind of standard these days. So right away, we see that regular Razer has an older chip, which means it might be slightly slower and less efficient than its more expensive sibling. However, based on my testing, running benchmarks and even gaming with these two, I haven't noticed any slowdowns. There were no jittering while scrolling through the UI. It was a pretty smooth experience on both. As I mentioned before, both of these phones have 6.9 inch FHD display. However, the Ultra can go up to 165Hz, while regular Razer can only go up to 144Hz. Now, based on my testing, while navigating UI and doing most day-to-day -day tasks, you will only be utilizing 120Hz anyway. You will only use full range of refresh rate while gaming or running a benchmark. Both phones also feature wireless charging which is great to see, especially on flip phones. It's only 5W compared to 30W via USB-C, but it is still a nice feature to have. Now let's talk about differences between Razer Ultra and the regular Razer. I'll talk about the price at the end, but keep in mind that the regular Razer 40 is much more affordable than not only Ultra, but also other foldables on the market right now. First, let's look at some key differences. With smaller external display, regular Razer has more space for battery, which results in 10% larger battery versus the Ultra. Now, in terms of battery life, I haven't had any issues. On light use, I could go almost two days on both of them. And on heavy use, I could easily go through whole day on one charge. And I think this is pretty impressive for flip phones. Honestly, I prefer regular Ultra and here is why. First, Ultra can be an absolute fingerprint magnet because of the glass that it's used on its outer case. Uh, it does look nice, it does feel premium, but it's not very practical. Second, when you're holding the phone opened, you are resting your hands on a glass and it can be a bit slippery. Same for the rails. On Ultra, the rails are polished and therefore, you know, the phone is much more slippery. However, if you're using the regular razor, your fingers will be resting on this special vegan leather or, or whatever it's called. What is it called? Yeah, on this special vegan leather and just feels more comfortable. You're not accidentally interacting with the outer screen. It's just much, much nicer. And also the rails have this matte finish, meaning less fingerprints and it's also a bit less slippery, so yeah. Another thing with the glasses, as Zach from Jerrix Everything likes to say, glass is glass and glass breaks. Therefore, you know, if you're a bit clumsy and if you tend to drop your phone, yeah, this one might not be it because it can obviously shatter pretty easily. With this phone, it just feels much sturdier. It feels like it can withstand some drops. Build quality is amazing on both of them, but if I could pick one of these two, I would definitely pick the regular Razer. Now, the last reason why I prefer regular Razer is because of its smaller screen. There's a less distraction. You're not tempted to use external display to do your regular tasks, such as replying on emails, messages, even scrolling the TikTok or whatnot. It's all possible in Ultra, and I think it's great. In terms of innovation and possibilities, it's fantastic. If you're really trying to balance your screen time and trying to stay away from screen for a bit, then regular Razer is much better option. You know, you can still see plenty. You can see your notifications, you can see the timer, you can see the weather, you can see the time, of course. It's not as tempting as having the full-fledged display out here to your disposal. You know, you close your phone and you stay away from all the distraction. Both of these phones are running nearly clean Android 13, which is great to see. There's no bloatware, there's no weird skins. Motorola has been always great at this. However, there are certain features which are unique for foldables or flip phones and those, in my opinion, actually make sense. So I have already mentioned that you can split the apps and use, a, for example, the camcorder or use it as a mini laptop with a tiny keyboard because the hinges can be set at any angle. You can literally use it also as a, as a tripod for the camera. But Motorola also brings a few more tricks. For example, if you do this weird chopping gesture, you will get your LED on. Or if you just shake your phone like this, 
it will enable the camera, which is pretty neat in my opinion. Obviously with this form factor there will have to be a trade-off, in this case it's a cameras. They're not the worst cameras I've seen, however I do not like pictures which each of these produce. They both take amazing pictures while in great light conditions. However, as soon as conditions change a bit, phones will struggle, you will have a lot of noise on your pictures, they might be blurred, they might not be focused properly, subjects might be blurred if the movement, not a great experience. So on Razer 40 we have 64 megapixel main sensor, while Ultra or Razer Plus has 12 megapixel main camera. Both have the same 13 megapixel ultra wide, where as you can see, pictures looks great. In the middle area, they're really sharp, well exposed, however, as soon as you start focusing on the edges, details will quickly disappear. Now we can see the same pattern in terms of video. So a regular Razer can only record up to 4K 30fps, while Ultra can record up to 4K 60fps. On the bright side, they can both shoot in HDR10 Plus standard. For the selfie camera, we have 32 megapixel sensor and once again, Ultra is capable of recording a higher FPS when compared to regular Razer. The Razer 40, originally priced as 699, has now been discounted to 499, while 40 Ultra has been reduced from 999 to 699. So if you've been eyeing a flip phone or foldable phone in general for a while now, and you were hesitant because of the high price, I can confidently recommend Moto Razer 40, especially now at a discounted price. The Ultra is also not a bad deal, but for me at least, it comes with several trade-offs in the form of material used and smaller battery and the large screen, which can be distracting at times. So there you have it, two foldable phones for a Motorola reviving the legendary Razer. I think they've done a really good job. You know, there are always things that could be improved. For example, I wish the auto display, especially the larger one, was better utilized. Yes, you can run most apps on it, uh, it's not very limiting, but I can totally see developers fully utilizing and embracing this auto display, for example, for live activities, similar to what we see with Apple, where you can see real-time tracking of your pizza delivery or your flight info and pro Progress or live weather activities. There's so much more that could be done with this outer display, but I understand this also depends on developers actually fully embracing this form factor. I believe we live in an age where regular brick phones are becoming somewhat boring and people want something new, something fresh. We can see many users simply not refreshing their phones every one or two years anymore because there is simply not enough value or not enough progress happening within the regular phones. And this is why I think it is worth exploring other form factors, which, while not perfect, can remind us how technology can be exciting and innovative again. Motorola clearly demonstrates that folded phones and innovation doesn't need to cost thousand dollars. Even if the user has to make a few trade-offs, is there a room for improvement? Of course, there'll be always a room for improvement. I'd like to see better cameras, latest chipsets, faster wireless charging, but I believe all of that will come very soon. Remember that Razer from 2020 I showed you at the beginning? What will Motorola and others introduce in 3 years time? I think there are rather exciting times ahead of us. Well, that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like and maybe even consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.